The next paper will be presented by Dr. Mirza from the UK, and it's entitled Laparoscopy, Computerized Tomography, and FDG Positive Emission Tomography Role in the Management of Gastric and Gastroesophageal Cancer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, uh, we all know that gastric and gastroesophageal cancers commonly metastasize to the peritoneum. And once that happens, it's associated with poor prognosis. What we have to do uh, is to utilize all the tools that we have in our kit to identify this problem uh, right from the beginning. The aim of this study was to evaluate the role of staging laparoscopy in comparison with CT and FTG PET imaging in staging patients with GOG and gastric cancer. Uh, we evaluated the database uh, uh, from 1996 to 2003 uh, at our unit um, and compared the preoperative, operative, and post-operative findings from these patients. Before I, uh, I need, I, I would like to briefly touch base on um, the management of upper GI cancers in my country. Till 2000, um, the gastric and esophageal cancers were being managed by a large cohort of surgeons that included breast surgeons, general surgeons, vascular surgeons, um, and of course, um, uh, abdominal surgeons. But what happened from 2000 onwards was that we developed a specific esophagogastric training pathway in which uh, all these cases were dealt in a specialist unit. Uh, I belong to Manchester, which is a northwest area. Um, we had initially 11 units who were dealing with esophagogastric cancers. But over the uh, last seven or eight years, the units have been reduced to now four. And the cancers are only dealt by esophagogastric surgeons now. We don't have thoracic surgeons dealing with it. We don't have breast surgeons dealing with it. We don't have vascular surgeons dealing with it. Uh, so the things have been optimized in last, uh, in last decade. What was happening previously was that we were subjecting patients um, to, uh, to, usual scan, uh, to usual staging pro procedures, which were CT scan, uh, EGD. We had EUS available since 2008 and a CT PET, which was introduced since 2009. And then the machine broke down and we didn't have the CT PET available for almost uh, all, all 2010. Another learning thing that we had was that staging laparoscopy, we brought it down to the very bottom. Um, what was happening was that initially, we were doing all these investigations randomly. So there was no proper management protocol uh, for patients with gastric and esophageal cancers. Um, and we were finding uh, that uh, staging laparoscopy was happening even before um, an EUS or a CT PET was being done. Uh, and we were finding metastasis, which I think was wrong approach. So now we were doing a non-invasive investigation first, and then proceeding to an invasive investigation, which is a stage staging laparoscopy. And at every time, at, at every stage, patients were being discussed at the MDT uh, before the next management decision was made. Uh, and in case if the CT PET or EUS has shown, or, or a normal plain CT of chest abdomen balance has shown that this patient has got metastasis, the patient never went for a staging laparoscopy. We, uh, we, uh, we assessed uh, 300, uh, nearly 400 patients uh, um, in, our, uh, uh, in, a, in our series, uh, predominantly main population, uh, and significant number of GO, GOJ cancers. Uh, we performed staging laparoscopy, and these 387 patients are those patients who were, who were referred for staging laparoscopy. Uh, these patients were not found to have a metastatic disease uh, on initial st uh, staging CT or FTG PET or CT PET, which became available subsequently. Uh, all procedures were completed without any major complications. Um, from a total cohort of patients, uh, we found uh, that 14% of patients were found to have either intraperitoneal deposits, liver mats, or acidic fluid uh, on staging laparoscopy, uh, which were not identified initially on all staging imaging modalities available to us. 86% um, of the patients were subsequently uh, uh, either were given in, uh, divided into two groups, 
for early stage T1 cancer, uh, we proceeded directly for surgery. Um, T2 plus cancers or a not positive cancers, patient proceeded for neoadjuvant chemo, uh, and then based on the progression, um, if there were, there were the stable disease, patient went for for surgery. If there was a d disease progression following neoadjuvant chemo, um, then the patient went for palliative treatment. It's important to mention here that we don't use routine radiotherapy. It's neoadjuvant chemotherapy based based on um, MRC protocol of ECX chemotherapy uh, which we use. Uh, when we look back at our data, um, I, I, I would have to accept that this is a bit, uh, the, the, there's a bit of a bias because we didn't have EUS available since two th uh, till 2008 and CTPET came into our unit from 2009 onwards. So I, I've just put the, to compare the sensitivity of uh, only three imaging modalities, which was staging laparoscopy, CT and FTG PET, and you can clearly see uh, that for peritoneal metastasis or even liver metastasis, uh, CT staging laparoscopy has got much more sensitivity as compared to CT and FDG PET. CT has got poor sensitivity if, um, if the deposits are less than uh, 0.5 millimeter, uh, CT scan won't pick them up, and staging laparoscopy is the best option in that case. And if you compare the median overall survival for patients who underwent operative surgery, uh, uh, it was 14 months, but we had a range of about one month to 11 years. Uh, uh, in summary, I would uh, we recommend that upper GI cancers require multi-dimensional approach. We should, have, we should have an extensive workup for these patients. At every stage, um, these patients should be discussed back and forth in the multidisciplinary meeting or tumor boards uh, so that the progress of these patients can be managed um, and monitored and appropriate decisions can be made. Uh, staging laparoscopy is safe and an important adjunct for preoperative workup for these patients. Thank you very much. This paper is now open for discussion. I, I think I'd, I'd like to ask you, we learned um, a few years ago in using CT for pancreatic, excuse me, uh, laparoscopy for pancreatic staging, that the use of washings and cytology was meaningful, and that actually our staging strategy, our TNM strategy, showed if you had positive cytology for pancreatic cancer, it was a stage four tumor. Are you using any cytology and washing in identification of these patients? Uh, as I mentioned, till 2000, um, the protocols were not very clear, and some consultants who were doing staining laparoscopy at that time were using uh, peritoneal washings as part of the routine protocol. But since 2000 onwards, peritoneal washings were taken out of the window, and the, the protocol was not to do them because they, were, they, they didn't find any clinical benefit. But I totally agree with you that uh, there, there is a role for peritoneal washing uh, in patients who are being staged. So um, you showed us the sensitivity data. What about the specificity data? Um. Um, I, I totally agree with you. What happened was that um, I think the, the slide of a specificity was another slide, which actually is not in this presentation, but I don't remember the figures on really on top of my head. Yeah, because um, I think it's a big issue because, um, you know, you got a sensitivity of 48% or so. So um, there can be disease there half the time and the pet will be negative. Um, in, in our experience, about 20% of patients that have a positive PET finding don't actually have disease at the location that it says. And, and those patients are taken away from us as surgeons because of that. Um, you know, it's interesting, in the world literature, there's only about two papers that show that PET has ever improved the survival of a patient. That's true. So um, I, I think it's important that you're rigorously studying these and using the laparoscopy as a control, and they're very important data, and I encourage you to continue this work. Thank you very much. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you.